Good morning and welcome to News 9. I'm Ms. Chita. And first up, Narendra Modi's recent visit to the valley was more than just a Prime Minister's visit. He has a mission in place for the Assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Take a look as to what that is. After a massive win in the Lok Sabha elections, especially in Uttar Pradesh, BJP has now set its eyes on JNK's Assembly elections. The party is gearing up for the elections with an ambition of gaining at least 44 seats. The party named this task as Mission 44. JNK, which has 87 assembly seats, will go to the polls later this year. JNK is one of the states in India that holds elections every six years instead of the five years national norm. The state assembly polls will be closely watched as the BJP was able to gain three out of six seats in JNK in the Lok Sabha elections. The task is already in place as Modi created a record of visiting the valley twice after becoming the Prime Minister. He also addressed crowds in Ladakh and Kargil wearing the traditional attire Goncha. Modi's Kargil visit was seen as a landmark of sorts as this was the first Prime Minister to visit the region since 1999. He wooed the crowds in both the areas by making several promises of employment, universities in the region and many more. He even cleared a long-standing debt that the state had to pay to the food corporation. Amit Shah, the party president, has already put the task in force. He has instructed party workers to work hard for the upcoming assembly elections in the state. The only question remains as to whether Modi can do the unthinkable in the valley. Let's wait and watch. A News 9 report. Well, in order to boost defence system, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is all set to gift INS Kolkata to the nation today. He will commission India's largest indigenously built warship, INS Kolkata, at the naval dockyard in Mumbai. Modi will be accompanied by Defence Minister Arun Jaitley and Chief of Naval Staff Admiral R.K. Dhawan on the occasion. This is Modi's second visit to Maharashtra in two months. Last month, he visited the Baba Atomic Research Centre in Mumbai. Well, my colleague uh, Arun joins us with more details on this. Well, uh, Arun, certainly a good day for uh, uh, Indian defence, but uh, if you can just throw more light on this warship for us. Nishita, this uh, particular warship, the keel for this was laid down in September 2003 and the ship was formally launched in March 2006. Uh, it is supposed to be uh, one of the three ships in this particular category. Uh, the other two being called the uh, INS Kochi and INS Chennai. Now, uh, it is considered to be much more uh, versatile compared to the other uh, Delhi class of ships, that is the INS Delhi, INS Mysore and INS Mumbai. Uh, what we are given to believe is that uh, this uh, particular ship, which measures 163 meters in length and has a width of 17.4 meters, has a displacement of 7,500 tons and two helicopters on board. But actually the uh, full fit out in terms of what kind of arms and ammunition it will carry will have to wait because uh, this particular uh, uh, warship that we are talking of uh, will be fitted, by, uh, fitted with what is called as the Barak NG uh, range of surface to air missile which uh, Israel is building for the Indian Navy. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the Barak NG, it will be able to detect incoming aircraft of uh, missiles within a range of 70 to 100 kilometers and intercept it up to 500 meters range. And uh, it will make the ship that is INS Kolkata completely battle worthy. At this point of time, uh, the ship uh, that we are talking of that is INS uh, Kolkata will be uh, uh, equipped with what is called as a Barak 1 missile which has a range of only 10 to 12 kilometers. So uh, significant uh, uh, development in terms of uh, the Barak NG missile. So uh, the DRDO has entered, remember, into a uh, collaboration with an Israeli company to develop the um, NG missile, but boosters have failed. So clearly we will have to wait for some time before uh, this particular ship becomes fully armed to the teeth, so to speak. But... Uh, Clearly, as you uh, rightly pointed out, this ship is named after the city of Joy, uh, Kolkata, the capital of West Bengal, and the biggest metropolis in East India. Uh, it actually features two important uh, uh, highlights about the city of Calcutta. It has the Howrah Bridge uh, in the background, 
the famous Howrah Bridge, which is symbolic of Calcutta, and in the forefront, it has a leaping Bengal tiger, two uh, iconic uh, images of Bengal, which is known to the rest of the world. So clearly, uh, a very important day as far as uh, the Indian Navy is concerned, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi himself being present at the formal uh, launch, and uh, more importantly, sending out a message to the uh, neighbors that India is alert uh, and will do anything to safeguard its borders. So a very important day as far as the Indian Navy is concerned. Remember, this happens uh, to be the very next day after the Indian Independence Day, so there is a bit of significance even attached to the uh, date, uh, so to speak, uh, Nishchita. Well, absolutely, and also in the backdrop of much excitement over this uh, unveiling, uh, several experts have pointed out how uh, there is basic weaponry missing in this uh, warship, and in many occasions it could be left virtually defenseless. Uh, can we say that uh, the Indian Navy, as well as the Prime Minister, is rushing into this unveiling? But uh, we'll come back to you for more details there, Arun. Indigenous anti-submarine state Corvette Kamartha at Vishakhapatnam on 23rd of August. Our ships are comparable, rather more weapon-oriented in terms of uh, fighting capability. If you compare ships of this displacement, I mean, if you're talking of uh, ships of displacement of 6,800 ton and the kind of uh, uh, weapon capabilities, uh, the capabilities which I've shown that it is a surface to surface missile, it is a surface to air missile, it is closing weapon system, it is a main gun, it has a uh, bold uh, sonar, it has got anti surface, uh, anti submarine capabilities, it has got torpedo tubes, it has got rocket launcher, it has got. Well, there we have it. Uh, several, uh, despite uh, the Indian Navy, in fact, going on to say that this is uh, the most equipped and the best battleship that uh, we have. However, several experts have gone on to say that the 7,500-ton warship intended as the country's biggest and most powerful guided missile destroyer is missing basic weaponry, which uh, leaves it virtually defenseless against incoming missiles and uh, submarines. And uh, considering that uh, it was... Uh, the entire deal was started off, uh, signed with Israel at a cost of $350 million. However, the co-developed missile has certain boosters that are built in India that are not up to the mark is what experts opine. And well, moving on now, temples were plundered during ancient times by foreign invaders who were in search of treasure. And if you thought it was a thing of the past, then think again. Incidents of treasure hunts have been witnessed in the Talavadi village of Mandya district. The ancient Ranganatha temple in this village has been in a dilapidated condition for a long time. The sanctum sanctorum of the temple was damaged by some miscreants. You must be thinking, who would want to damage the temple sanctum? Well, it was treasure hunters who targeted the Ranganatha temple this time. They dug up the areas around the temple in search of treasure. Since this temple is situated in the middle of the forest, it was an easy target for the miscreants. However, it is uncertain if treasure hunters found any riches. In local dinda, ado puja nadi tai to, nadi tai to aga ado yalla nitok buto gunde thagad buto devra leth kondo onta gida rasaravro. Iga puja puja yalla nitok gida saraga. Nidhi sikta dey ando buto aur thagdi rathe sarado. Iga nidhi sikki deya gatti lo aga adet kondo onta gida saraga. Localites are unhappy that the concerned authorities have not taken proper measures to protect these temples. Talwadi Anjaneya Devthana Tumba Prasiddha Vaddo Tumba Hela Tarko Anukula Ida Bhaktari Golge Adre Ali Yavde Ta Biru Dikalsa Gila Inde Ondo Sri Ranga Swami Devthana Ondo Dito A Devthana Dal Ida Vigraha Na Karo Kalthana Matkan Taun Ota Gida Ra. Many ancient temples are located in the same locality. However, there are chances that these temples might be attacked as well. Is there a way to stop these attacks? Ravi Lalipalya, News 9, Mandya. And well, it is not just rash driving that BMTC is infamous for. They also have the distinction of stopping buses randomly at bus stops, creating a nuisance for other commuters. This soon, however, might be a thing of the past. 
Haven't all of us seen BMTC buses being stopped randomly at bus stops? It does irritate you, doesn't it? Fret not, this soon will be a thing of the past. The state RTO is all set to give a tough time to those BMTC drivers who don't stop the bus at the designated place. They will be dealt with severely as a warning to errand drivers. A few have already been booked by the RTO. <laughs> Hello, Nadu, Hapazarada Ginintu, Prayani Kerige, Tondre Akpaide, Plesu, Bereva Hanagulu, Tondre Agi, the traffic to Choka Glike, Adu Dakpaide, Adrinda, Anta, Yurugu Koda, TSRTC Agodu, Bere Audevana Agodu, Mate Hechagi, BMTC, Hanagulu Koda, Idrali, Aurdu Samase Koda, Mane, now other than a review Madizi. BMTC conveniently washed its hands of the issue and stated that drivers and conductors have been told a number of times to follow lane discipline and avoid half a stopping. The BMTC traffic director even stated that strict action would be taken against those drivers and conductors who are found violating the set norm. We have started Sarathi service in the city in an effort to curb such indisciplined driving. Despite that, we have been getting reports of drivers causing problems to commuters. We have taken strict action against those. If the transport department books a case against such buses, we will hold the driver of that bus responsible. There have been such efforts even in the past. Will things be any different at least this time around is what remains to be seen. Pavitra for News 9, Bengaluru.